Hello and welcome back to the Healthcare and Complicated YouTube channel. Before I proceed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share all this amazing content with your communities in healthcare. And today I have another very exciting leader and guest for you. Uh, we have Jose Pedro Almeida, he's a chief AI strategist, he's also the world's top 70 health AI minds, also a board member, a digital data and AI executive and a speaker. Jose, how are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me. No, thank you so much for accepting the invite. Of course, I've been following your great work for quite some time. And thanks for being in here with me. No, I'm, I've been a longtime follower of your work and um, of how you influence all the digital health space. You are really uh, on top of mind of everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we have this amazing connection here yeah, because we both Portuguese. We're talking about Portugal <laughs> before the recording. But today we have a very uh, amazing topic which is bringing a new intelligence to healthcare operating systems. And José Pedro, you have been a pioneer in leveraging data and AI for over 15 years with truly hands-on experience. Why do you think AI never worked and why do healthcare organizations such as hospitals are still lagging behind? Well, one of the first issues is related to trust and trust is really important um, in healthcare when you want to do really valuable stuff in the field. And I think that uh, companies that have been selling uh, products to healthcare have been selling it the wrong way, uh, starting by selling uh, AI in the first place, when they really should be selling is solving clinical problems uh, that doctors and nurses face, face every day. And so um, sometimes I really say that um, I don't care if the solution has AI or not. That simply doesn't matter. What matters is if you bring uh, positive outcomes to patients. Uh, and for that, uh, you need to, first of all, be in the field, work side by side with them um, and test the solution you have in that environment. That's why um, I know they say this, that you need to plug this into the healthcare operating system. And the healthcare operating system is quite complex. It's a, sometimes it's acute care, uh, a lot of systems, uh, a lot of high stakes. Uh, and so many companies fail, not only in, the terms they in terms of the way they develop their products, but also in terms of the way they deploy their products for, for those products to work with this environment in a seamless way um, where doctors almost uh, don't need to log in to any other system to have a prediction of a certain model. It simply appears to them uh, almost in a transparent and magical way. And I think that's how um, companies should approach uh, the healthcare arena. Uh, mostly those that are trying to develop AI, they, they shouldn't sell AI. They should sell what problem they are trying to solve and where have they developed this side by side um, with clinicians. Brilliant. Th 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 thank you so much. It's almost everybody leads with technology is a common mistake. It's almost you have to take a step back and really address what's um, what's going on. Moving on, why do you think now is the time the time is different with generative AI? Well, it's an inflection point, uh, and and uh, probably some some history is is needed here. Um, and for I can give you my example. All my career uh, and my teams, we have been developing AI, trying and deploying it in in real life stake uh, scenarios in healthcare organizations. And it took so much effort to do this. You you really needed to understand each AI model deeply. Uh, you needed to understand how how would it work in a certain environment, the features that were being used to train it. Uh, models are very prone to overfitting, which means they learn in a certain reality, but then when you test these models in another reality, they simply do, do, don't work. 
And most of all, AI was um, really narrow. What I mean by that is that when you were building a model, you were building the model for, for just a use case. Uh, imagine uh, predicting uh, readmission rates in a certain hospital, for instance. But nowadays, uh, with, the, with um, this breakthrough that large language models um, take uh, into the scene, which is uh, a capability of being much more generalists, being able to analyze all types of data when producing an inference, this is just uh, a game changer. And the reason being is that when you when you are trying to help um, in an healthcare scenario, when you are trying to help a doctor or, or a nurse uh, in a certain inference, you have to take into account uh, several types of data, several realities uh, of the patient in order to be accurate. And, and the problem was, uh, for instance, if you had a model that was predicting a uh, long uh, nodule in a CT scan of, of a patient, that model would only know about that. It would be trained on that, uh, but the problem is it wouldn't see uh, the patient history, uh, the pathology of the patient, the lab results of the patients, and all those signs, the, the drugs that he was taking, all those signs are really important to, to make a prediction. And so nowadays, uh, with, with the power that's, that these models bring, which you know is being um, um, flagged by uh, um, an umbrella that is called generative AI, but behind what what is behind are neural networks. Um, the, the architecture simply works. It can absorb all types of data, and it can help like any other model um, much better than any other model has ever been able to do. And that's uh, really transformative. Uh, mostly because in healthcare we are dealing with a, a high, a really diverse set of data firsthand, but also we are dealing with um, very uh, a, a large amount of unstructured data. More than eighty percent of healthcare data is unstructured. So the value uh, lies in in having models that are are able to do inferences on top of all this complexity. And, and I think these models are here to stay and to, to produce value like no other has been able to, to bring to the game. Brilliant. Uh, th thank you so much. I also heard from you that, of course, it's very important to give the language models the right information and there's a lot of missing links. So I can see that generative AI can bring it all together with, of course, the right intelligence. Moving on. How will healthcare organizations have to transform in this new era, for instance, bringing AI leaders into the C-suite? Well, I think the organizations that will move forward and stay ahead um, will be the ones that uh, transform themselves into uh, more or less uh, tech companies in, in some form. And so that old mindset of uh, just just being able to uh, you know be worried about uh, the top line, bottom line, and nothing else, that mindset will will be over because this new generation of AI implies that organizations adapt all workflows to work in a much more automated way. And for that, uh, there are, I think, two vectors that organizations, healthcare organizations, but mostly any organization needs to take into account. The first one is uh, the uh, technology uh, perspective, which, which is uh, they need to understand that data and AI are not part of the IT. This is a separate uh, area of high specialization. So everything that has to do with data, AI and digital needs to be taken care of uh, a part of the IT, which is running the operations. And that area will need to build a digital representation of the business. And what I mean by that is that uh, currently organizations, uh, they walk at the speed of the IT. But with this technology, you need, you, you need to walk, walk almost at an exponential pace. And for that, 
you, you need to have that digital representation sideways where this intelligence um, can, can be plugged in and really help to automate uh, much more processes than we have nowadays. The other uh, angle and the other vector is related to people, to the people framework that you have in, in, into place. And I think that starts at the top by having a, a leader in the executive team that really understands uh, about how to deploy and how to think strategically about AI, data, and digital, and is able to uh, design a plan for that, but also a leader that is able to influence uh, the other members of the C-suite. We are talking about the CEO, the CFO, the COO, because those members, they, they are really focused on, you know, uh, bringing sales if it's a private organization or looking after costs and, and all their life has been focused on that. They don't have time uh, most often to think about how could they do all this process differently and to study deeply what these algorithms are now, are now able to do. And so I think that by starting over there and you can see uh, really interesting examples such as Walmart where the CEO Doug, Mac Doug McMillan uh, just send a broad message uh, in the, in an old newspaper signaling that uh, 50,000 workers are going to be retrained for the whole organization into Gen AI. So what that means is also um, what uh, uh, some Harvard professor, which is Ch Chisai Needle, uh, wrote in a digital in our digital mindset book. That means sending a bold stroke message. So every part of the organization will have to be retrained and, and um, learn to, to do their work with these algorithms, with these models uh, by their side. So we are talking about in the next three years, retraining 40% of the workforce according to some studies. And so when you look at all of this, um, you really understand that uh, organizations will change deeply the way they operate. And so they have to take into account all these layers and how to structure them. Now oh, that's brilliant. That's such a fantastic insight. It's almost, and it, it is almost having a completely separate strategy for digital AI and data. And, and running that in parallel with the, the business operational side is not, is not very, very easy. And it, there are different paces and of course, many, many different uh, dynamics that you fully understand. I really love the Walmart um, example, and I believe, of course, many other organizations are uh, watching and following suit because they need to adjust to compete in the market and, of course, um, bringing efficiencies and truly embrace the generative AI uh, era, if you like. And the, the last question that I have for you is, how, how do you see the hospital of the future? <laughs> Well, the, the, the hospital of the future, I like to say that is an hospital that will bring much more time uh, for doctors to spend with patients. And for that, uh, you need to completely rethink the whole operations uh, of, of an hospital, but not only an hospital, any healthcare organization. And I think this technology, what it brings into the scene is uh, the level of automation that you can start thinking about some processes which because these models uh, until today uh, we were trying to understand computers language but from now onwards these these models start to understand us and that is highly powerful because just imagine that one of these models will be able to call a patient before an outpatient visit to to understand what happened uh, between in uh, patient episodes, the last episode that uh, he went into the organization, the next outpatient visit, what happened in his clinical uh, course, and it will be able to capture those variables. So all of this that I'm saying, the call, talking to the patient, capturing the variables, all of that will be done from my perspective by AI agents, because that will save time uh, for the moment with the physician. And, that, and besides that, before the patient gets into the, the, the clinic, the, the, the AI agents will be able to look at bloods, the, the blood results, uh, the medical image, uh, the pathology report, and, and produce uh, somehow an inference of uh, what's, what might be um, you know, 
the the the, the risks and the, the the concerns about that specific use case but also do something um, much more powerful which we are starting to see in some research that, that is coming for instance as, at, from microsoft where uh, for instance imagine a ct scan of a certain um, disease uh, and these models will be able to uh, almost generate another CT scan of how that disease should have evolved one year later. And so if one year later the patient goes into uh, the doctor and the, the, the simulated um, image that model generated uh, does not fit with the image that the patient has nowadays, the, the model will flag that uh, something is going on. And so having this kind of automation working side by side with clinicians is something uh, completely game changer, which we couldn't have until until nowadays, because these models, I would say, were quite dumb. Uh, they only knew about a specific area. They couldn't you know, correlate all these signs. But these models, they learned the representation of the world. Um, and somehow they will will be able to to produce reasoning in a very powerful way, uh, and, and and we are starting to see also very emerging properties coming out of these models that no one think thought would be possible, such as being able to program, for instance. And so, when you are able to deploy all this intelligence into the processes that currently exist, uh, you 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 start to have. Uh, a glimpse of what will be the hospital of the future. Brilliant. That's fantastic. I really, of course, like the idea of the futuristic uh, vision of the clinician spending more time with patients because that's what one of the biggest challenges. We are going in the opposite direction, unfortunately, but now technology and what to describe is so advanced. The automation and everything that is now available can really reverse that if, of course, we can manage to do things um, uh, appropriately. Jose Pedro, we're coming to the end of the interview. I have one last little thing for you. I don't, I'm not sure if you're seeing the, the YouTube channel related to the channel. I'll finish all my episodes with a big question, which is how can we make healthcare uncomplicated? Well, uh, we need to do it step by step. Uh, there's no magic formula. You need to tackle process by process. Um, and I'm a, a deep believer uh, that this technology will help, you know, uh, advance like uh, a century um, that would or will, will would have taken us a century to advance and we will will probably advance more in the next five years with what, what is available in these language models than we would have in, a, in almost 100. So I think I think the way to make this uncomplicated is having the computers working for us uh, and not having to do all those mundane tasks uh, that currently exist because there's no other solution. And so uh, I'm a deep believer on that vision. Brilliant. What a great way to round up and to finish. Jose Pedro, thank you so much for being in here, also bringing this amazing expertise and, and also congratulations on your fantastic career and your amazing accomplishments so yeah truly fascinating episode my pleasure honor to be here joan thank you so much i'm gonna round up now to all our viewers and listeners make sure you subscribe to the channel also connect with uh, josue pedro i'm gonna post his linkedin and his twitter in here get in touch with him as you can see he's got a lot a lot of expertise in this domain Acknowledge our industry partners and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.